Hello Trophy Wine Hunters, welcome back to my wine channel. Today is a bit of a special video. I'm still in Hong Kong and when I travel I like to go to the different um, wine shops and see what's out there. Hong Kong, as I've discovered, is a great market for wine lovers. Um, there's a lot of selection, particularly if you like Bordeaux or Burgundy. There's lots of range in um, terms of pricing. So anyway, this is um, a review of the wine shop in Sogo, which is a department store in Causeway Bay. I don't have the address. I guess it's in the Hennessy Road. It's in the East Point Center. Um, and it's in the B2 in the basement. It's got a lot of different other types of food. And they've got a small wine shop but pretty pretty good selection so just kind of a couple of examples again Bordeaux is very prevalent so here's a um, they've got um, the 2007 Angelis and the 2010 Angelis um, that's equivalent to about again Hong Kong dollars is gonna be one to six for Canadian and one to eight for US dollars so this is gonna be about six hundred uh, dollars a bottle um, for the 2007 and about eight hundred dollars a bottle for maybe seven hundred dollars a bottle for the 2010 which is a pretty good price for these wines all these stores seem to have uh, rotating specials and so when you catch up on a special this is quite a reduction so this is the 03 Mouton at seven thousand eight hundred dollars a bottle so that would be equivalent to about a um, thousand maybe one hundred or two hundred dollars Canadian for the 03 I think is a very good price compared to what we get in BC um, I'd love to hear what US people would say about the comments again divide by eight and that would be your price in US dollars um, so yeah, that's almost like a thousand twenty, it's like a two hundred dollar Canadian reduction on this. So I look out for these um, price um, reductions, and I'm not sure if there's any rhyme or reason to it, but um, I'd take advantage of them if I were in Hong Kong. I thought this was the best deal I saw out there. This is the 12, 2012 Darmelec for five ninety nine. Um, so that would be just under probably about eighty to ninety dollars Canadian which is a very very good price for aged um, Darmelac. Um, this would be a very um, drinkable vintage right now so it's almost 10 years old just uh, approaching its drinking window there's no way we get this price in BC liquor stores so um, I picked up a couple of bottles for uh, friends and um, it's really uh, it's, I think the best deal I saw out there Here's another nice deal. It is Chateau Lascombe. It's a second growth wine. Um, 2007, so it's got almost uh, 14, 15 years on it. 945, which would be about maybe $130 Canadian, $100 US. Um, I think it's a pretty nice price. They seem to have a lot of Jadot wines, and I guess every country gets their own different distribution of things. Um, but um, I picked up a bottle of um, Grand Cru, Jadot Grand Cru Corton Grave 2014, for just over $100 Canadian, which I thought was a very good deal. This is another kind of entry level um, Burgundy wine from Santene, which is a region in Cote de Bonne. Uh, simple wine, but you know, $368. That's about. Um, maybe $60 Canadian, which is pretty good. I, I like this price. This is an example of some of the um, second and third wines that you see in Hong Kong that I almost never see anywhere else. So this is La Saint-Estef de Monrose, which is their third wine. Um, the second one I think is La Dame de Monrose, but this is $208, which would be about, um, let's say $35. It's normally sold just to restaurants. Um, I've never seen it in North America, and there's just such a demand for labels, um, brand wines that you know they'll take. A lot of people will. They like to drink Bordeaux, and they like to drink established labels. And so anything that's got Monros on it is preferable to, let's say, next to it, uh, Larcis du Cas, which might not be as uh, famous or Lagrange, which is also on the other side of it. And if you look at the price comparison, well, you've got two wines, um, you know, very famous Moros, which is you, a third of the price of these other wines that maybe some people haven't heard of. So another example of some more, and again, I've never seen this many second wines, so it's Connectable Taubo, which is a uh, second wine of Taubo, Le Marquis de calan second wine of uh, calan and Chevalier de Lescombe. And um, if you look at the pricing, the nice thing about Hong Kong is it gives you that choice. So if you want to drink um, Lascombe, the first label, you pay $600. 
or more and then if you don't have you don't want to spend that much money you spend it on Chevalier Lescombe you still get the Lescombe name for about half the price I like the variety um, and I'm not sure if, well, how they would do here um, not sure how people would react to second wines or even third wines here in North America my thought would be that they probably wouldn't sell as well as in um, Hong Kong and that's probably why um, so many of these wines are shipped off to Hong Kong Another second wine, again, sorry for the evacuation for the second wines, but um, we don't even, in, Can in BC, we don't even get the first wine of those act. Uh, so for them to get the second wine, uh, this just shows the selection, uh, particularly in Bordeaux. So I think that's why you have so many Bordeaux drinkers in Hong Kong, because the selection is big and it becomes just a vicious cycle. Like if that's what people like and that's what they see, that's what they buy. And that also reflects in the market, in the auction market. You'll see um, Asian buyers buy a lot of, um, focus their attention in auction on Bordeaux wines and Burgundy wines. And um, because that there's a demand for those, then the prices go up. So I guess maybe it's a kind of, it fuels itself. This is another wine that I thought was really well priced, Chateau Canon at just under a thousand dollars Hong Kong, which would be $130 Canadian. Um, and I also like that they always have um, older vintages. Um, they always have a good choice of selection. And that's what I really like about Hong Kong. Um, so if you are in Hong Kong, know that you're lucky. Count yourself as lucky in terms of um, your choice of Bordeaux and Burgundy. And so I guess the strategy would be if you're going to Hong Kong, drink and buy Burgundy and Bordeaux and you're if you're from Hong Kong and you um, are visiting other places don't drink Bordeaux and Burgundy go and drink other countries like Italy like um, Champagne um, like um, American like BC um, because those you won't get the availability you will in Hong Kong and the prices probably won't um, you know be as uh, good as in Hong Kong but mainly the selection won't be as good. I hope this has been useful and until next time, happy drinking.